today we're jumping back into some more create and that means uh well we are going to upgrade our power yep we are going to be upgrading our power getting ourselves prepared for more gadgets and gizmos uh to be going on in our base and uh well let's go ahead and uh, start off with one of the coolest ones in my opinion and that is going to be a steam powered engine yeah steam powered engine this bad boy right here if we go ahead and pop open this we can see how this functions now this gives you uh, a little bit of an indication on how this is going to work which is pretty neat right it, it shows you um all the different parts and all that cool stuff so to set this up i have myself a belt laid just right here i think this is going to be the perfect height um now i do want this raised up because i think it's going to look a little bit better if it's up in the sky so that way we can sort of build a contraption or build some stuff around it now um i do need to place myself a tank down uh but i don't want the tank going i don't want it on this level i actually need it to be uh i would say one higher than this um is where we're going to actually start the blaze burners uh but this right here actually should be pretty good yeah one more than this um and so what we're gonna have is this laid out just like that and then uh, this is gonna be the layer that we have our blaze burners but the main part of course is our fluid tank i'm gonna be setting up two of these steam machines but as you can see right here we're gonna lay this out and make a three by three and then we're gonna take this five blocks tall so one two three four and five now i do need to make another set but i'm going to set up the first one just to short sort of show how it's going to be built um so break these and then what i'm going to need is blaze burners uh, i went ahead and just made a bunch of those blaze burners on the sides just like this and then on the bottom in the middle i'm going to be placing some steam engines uh and then same goes here blaze burners just like that on the side um, so this is going to be the setup for a pretty cool uh, looking tank. And I like the idea of having the steam engines um, on the bottom. We could put them on the side. It actually looks pretty good having two sets on the side. If we did that, though, we run into a bit of a, a problem. Um, so I think just having one shaft is going to be the, the, the best looking option. Now, of course, I have this set up here. How do I feed the blaze burners? Well, that is where... Uh, this nifty thing, the machine arm, is going to come into play. Now, we'll do that here in a moment, uh, because we're going to have to create our own setup specifically for making these things, these precision machine mechanisms. Yeah, the precision mechanisms are kind of a pain. So, put a pin in this, we're going to hold this for just a moment, um, and then we're going to come back. Uh, so let's go ahead and get ourselves a temporary setup for creating these precision mechanisms because it's actually not that difficult to do now real quick last episode i did get a couple of questions asking why i'm not using the electrical parts um that is an add-on that's in here well that is because it does require the mechanical crafters and uh quite a setup as far as the items required in order to get them and they don't really power a whole lot but i do want to use these in the future um so definitely power based uh, will be a great way to go. But still, I don't think that power competes anywhere near what this is going to be generating. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and dive into create some more, right? Uh, I am going to need uh, a weighted ejector. I think this is going to be fantastic and a, a, a nifty way of doing this thing. Um, so what I want is something very simple. We're going to have uh, deployers that are going to be placing. It's very similar to what you see here. We have deployer, 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 and it's got to do this five times in a row. So one, two, three. Let's think of those as our spaces here. And uh, we'll leave that. And then we'll go ahead and place our belts. And then we'll place our deployers. So we kind of have a bird's eye view of how this is going to work. Um, so our deployer is going to do the work. We can easily send the items here temporarily with uh, without using belts or anything. We can just use hoppers uh, for now. But I do want to wait an ejector that is actually going to send items to a barrel. Um, so at the moment, we'll have our barrel, and the barrel is going to go one block above, just like how I've been doing everything else. Um, and then we'll place a funnel, and funnel's fine for this because it's only one at a time. But did you know you can actually place funnels up here? I don't know why I used that when I could have just flown. Uh, but you can place funnels up here. And of course, you can change them. You can hold shift to have them disperse items, or you can have them place items. Uh, so, or accept items. 
So as you can see, you can click this and you have items going. Uh, this would pull items out. So if I put items in, you can see it's going to throw an item out. And uh, notice, by the way, that it's only going to put one item out uh, at a time. Uh, it's not going to like keep throwing them out, which is really useful for some builds if uh, you were looking for something that does that. Um, but in our case, we want it to actually pull. I think that's going to be great. Um, so this is how this is going to work. We're going to have the weighted ejector over here. And the weighted ejector, I sh it should be able to do this. But we're going to shift click and have that selected. And that should be able to toss the item back over here once it's done. And this should be a pretty funny looking setup. Um, and it should be very fun. And that's what this is all about is having fun. Uh, so we'll have hoppers. Like I said, very temporary on this because uh, I probably use conveyor belts because it just looks cooler. But hoppers, we'll put those on the side for right now. And uh, we need to send it the items it's asking for. So small gears, large gears, iron nuggets. And it does consume a lot of these. Um, so it may not seem like you're sending a lot in here, but it, 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 it will use a lot uh, because it is doing it five times per. So even if you put 16 in here, it's going to run through those five times and use all those items. All right, so we'll put some nuggies in. There we go. Um, and then we're ready. All we got to do is send, uh, give this some power and give it some gold plates. Uh, I think 16 is fine for right now. At least getting us started before we have some better setup for this. Um, I'm going to take these out for just a moment uh, because I got to get this power. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, one water wheel should be good. We might have to use two water wheels for this. That's why I can't wait to get this power set up. So almost everything is ready. As you can see, I'm connecting up the last pieces. And uh, then I just got to fill this in with dirt uh, for now. I mean, it doesn't have to look good, but I will fill it in with some dirt. There we go. And uh, yeah, as you can see, this is running on its own and is tossing that in. And that actually drops it right in. <laughs> wow, we already get to see it working. Um, and now the thing that will end up happening is after we get the final process piece, um, once we have that, we can set up a filter for everything and this whole setup could change. Uh, but right now, this should be able to work, at least for our first piece. So let's go ahead and put one in and then we're going to watch this whole thing start to take place. You can see it is going to place that, then place in there. And then when it's done, boop, it gets flung right into there and then it's ready for its next one. Now, if this does completely finish, it won't go through this process, but this is not 100% guaranteed to work. It's only 80% guaranteed. And then if that 80%, uh, if that 20% that was to happen of it failing, um, you have a chance of getting some scrap parts but what it does is it resets this back to its initial state and has to go back through here five more times. Um, so be weary of that. It does cost a lot of components and you will need to have, if you plan on setting this up for automation later on, uh, you will have to have cogs automated, gears automated, and of course this automated as well. But at least getting it started right away, it should work. It does make a breaking sound if it does fail, by the way. It does make a breaking sound. And as you can see, this is a completed component. There we go. Perfect. Um, now, what we could do is uh, I don't know if uh, if it lands on this, if we have the ability to pull off of this directly. Um, but let's use a funnel. Uh, I think this actually might work because um, I know it flings, but we'll see. We'll see. Does this uh, we'll test it right here. Let's grab a barrel and let's place this right behind this. And instead of it getting flung off, let's have it test whether or not it is a finished product. And then we might have the automation, right? Will it fling it or will it go into the chest? That is the test. And it goes right in. Um, now, let's go ahead and put a new part in. And let's test the new part. So, will it fling with that being in the way? That's what I'm wondering. I don't know. It does fling. So this is fully automated. So this could be how we potentially set this up in the future. Um, it's, that actually works quite well. I was not expecting that. I don't think I've seen this setup anywhere either. So pretty neat. So while that is currently running, let's go ahead and take our component and let's make ourselves an arm. 
Uh, now we do need a brass casing and we are going to need some brass plates. Uh, that is another thing that we're going to need a little bit of a setup for, actually, now that I think about it. Um, and we might be able to tap into this little area right here. Um, this actually might be... I mean, we could put a press here. Uh, so, yes, we need a press from Create uh, to make plates. And that's because the brass, for some reason, in this pack, uh, just like everything else, the brass, unlike... Uh, all of the other ingots, it, for some reason, the iron hammer doesn't let it work, I don't think. Um, so if we place this, will it make sheets of brass? Oh, it does. Oh, never mind. So we don't have to have a, a crazy setup for this. We can actually do it this way. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. Well, that saves a little bit. Uh, but we are going to need this. So, uh, we need logs, right? So let's take this. Let's take a, uh, we'll do half a stack here. We'll do half a stack and half a stack. And what I'm going to do is I am going to set this up to place, um, we're going to use it to place, or make the brass casing. So I just put brass and logs in here, and it should divide properly. Just like that. It did not fling this for whatever reason. I think that's because this is full currently. Oh, uh, there's got to be a reason why it didn't fling. That's kind of odd. Uh, let's just put it on the depot. Oh, it's maybe because this is filtered. Ah, it's because that was filtered. That's why. Okay. Well, now we have the brass done. Um, so this is making some brass casings. All right. So we're good. We're good. We can now move on to our engine. Perfect. So mechanical arm all ready to go. So the way I'm going to get this to work is I'm going to shift click on all the spots that I want this to send items to. And uh, we are gonna place this right here. So pretty cool what this can do. Um, I believe that uh, if it has a inventory that it can pull from, actually, I think I have to set the uh, the place that it can pull from. So um, we select, these are where it's gonna deposit items. And then this belt is where it's gonna pull items. And so it has one input and the output. So it should detect the belt here. Well, when we get this going on, I might have to change this up. But what should happen is if I feed this coal or any kind of fuel on this belt, um, it should recognize it and it should pick it up. I'm probably gonna end up moving this belt and we're gonna have a, a different sort of setup, but uh, that should work. Uh, I think the only other thing we have left to do is to get infinite water put in here and then we're we're gonna have a power source that's really gonna be chugging here and creating a lot of stress units for us. Um, okay, so infinite water. So I think a sink is a really, or not a sink, a faucet is honestly a really simple setup for this. So supplementaries, faucet, just like we've used before, is going to be super simple. Um, we need a, a stair will look the best. I think you can use a slab. I think a stair is going to be one of the better lookings and then uh, trapdoors. So just put some trapdoors around it with some water and this will look really good. Um, so stair right here with some trapdoors running around. Actually, this needs to be turned the other way. So stair right here, trapdoors and even on the front trapdoor. Perfect. Waterlog this bad boy, and we are just about ready to go. So that waterlogged, and then we go ahead and place that. And then we turn this on, and that should be filling with water. So our tank, and we can't actually see the fluids inside. I wish we could. I don't know if there's a... Is there a way to see the fluids inside? I don't... Without our goggles. We are going to need some goggles. Hold on. Let's create... Let's get our goggles. Perfect. I think this will be really nice we're gonna need these so our goggles are on now we can see as you can see right here we have size we have water and we have heat and there is a bright if you're colorblind this may be hard to see but there is a brighter green uh bar and we want them to all be inside the green uh and not be in the red so uh coal for example uh let's also get some shafts right here and what we can do is hook in a shaft to the bottom of this. Uh, these are supposed to accept a shaft. 
I believe right. Uh, rotate direction. No, I don't want to change that. Why is it not giving me the ability? There we go. So there's the shafts, even though they're, oh, they're in the wrong direction. Okay. So let's go ahead and change this. It's weird that they're already working. Let's place them in like this. Because I want these, yeah, there we go, to be rotating like this. Yes, 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 that looks so much better. Now, this is spinning with these just setting here, uh, as you can see. Um, we are going to need to get some rotation on this block. Um, and I think a gearbox? A gearbox should be able to do this. Um, so we'll use a vertical gearbox. Uh, that'll go underneath this block. So right here. And then we'll have a cog. I think a small cog. Yep, a small cog should work. On top. And we will also have another gearbox. I don't know why gearbox. We have to create and then do gearboxes. Uh, another gear box should work. Okay. So two vertical gearboxes. We could have we could probably just do one gearbox now that I think about it. One gearbox right here, and then we'll send that. Now, at the moment, this does not have an inventory to pick from. Um, so that is going to change. Let's go ahead and get ourselves just a barrel for right now. Uh, and we can go ahead and place the barrel right here. And let's let's redo this. And we'll reselect. So reselecting. And then we'll select an inventory. Oop, that didn't work, did it? Should be able to select this as an inventory. Uh, am I doing something wrong? Maybe I just got to right click on it. I bet I got to just right click on it. Plus I want to place the barrel one lower. Um, Let's try this again. Try this again. Where did it go? There it is. Get that all done. And right click. Odd, it said it appears the mechanical arm has not been assigned to any targets. Select belts, depots, funnels. Oh, it needs a depot, that's right. Ah, yeah, 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 a depot. A depot or a belt, like a belt does work. Um, but we are going to need, we would need it to be one block lower in order for it to function. Um, a depot. Okay, so to get a depot to work, we basically just need an andesite funnel to deposit the items outside of the barrel. Um, and that's actually not too difficult to do, to, and we can probably make that look pretty decent. So right here will be the depot. Right here. And then above that will be the barrel. And then underneath that will be how we feed the items into the depot. And we need to switch this. Just like that. Perfect. And then we select. Ah, okay. So it's all trial and error. I'm still learning as well. And then we select that. And then we can place that down. Perfect. So now, as soon as I put coal in here, as, as you can see, it's going to drop. And then that is going to select it. And this will start to speed up. We're going to notice this whole process speed up. Boom. It's already got one done. And it should only get faster. As you can see right here, these numbers are going to be changing. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, this is perfect. There we go. And we can make this self-sufficient as well. All right. So as soon as we get a few more, the heat's going to rise. I don't think our water is going to matter. I think I have tested this on full run. So there we go. So this is just one of them set up. Um, and we could technically set this up a little differently and uh, we can have these butted right up next to each other. And I think this can uh, actually click on an entire other set of blaze burners. But as you can see, the line is perfect on this. Now, I gotta build a whole other one, an another one right beside it. And uh, I think what I'm gonna do with that 
is the exact same thing I did here. Uh, we're even going to use the same uh, the same mechanical arm. Yeah, and the same method of receiving inputs. So I have the same thing set up. Let's go ahead and replace this. And thankfully that arm, uh, it, it, it will select whatever we tell it to select. Um, and it should be able to reach. So uh, let's see. We can just right click these. Right click these. And it has a really, really far reach. And then that, and then we'll boop this down. Boop. There we go. <laughs> Organization of Tron. What is this like for having a bunch of outputs or something? Uh, oh, program a mechanical arm with 10 or more outputs. That is, that's a lot. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, so we have that done. And now this is going to be taking that coal that we have an unlimited amount of, by the way, we do generate a ton of coal. Uh, but we can also use lava gen for this as well. We have infinite lava. And so we could just feed this lava buckets. Um, and so I guess a goal to make this infinite would to use this stress to take the infinite lava that we have and just generate a, perpet a perpetual amount. And what we would do is we would have this generate off, pull off a belt. So I'm thinking right here, we have this power, right? Um, we could potentially use it to have a belt go from one side like a belt that's over here uh actually we need the belt to be down one with me uh let's see can i break that without breaking the thing yep perfect so i'm thinking about having a belt that's maybe right here i don't know if that's too high that's like right up on this i'm thinking we have a belt run along here All right i think That'll work, and then also have a belt that runs along this side. Um, and what we could do is we can have ourselves a lava setup and actually utilize some of those pipes. Uh, we might have to move this around a little bit, but that's pretty easy to do. But we'll have our belts carry a bucket of lava that is being generated from itself. Oh, this is going to be such a fun project. So I think I have the perfect solution to this, and it's actually kind of compact. Um, so what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to place a vertical gearbox right here, and we're going to come back to that in a minute. Um, I'm going to extend this belt one, um, and because we have a vertical gearbox, we've just changed the rotation direction. And so, as you can see, it's slowing down because we ran out of coal. Um, that's fine. It's still going to run, though, which is perfect. Um, but we're going to be providing this with... Uh, yeah, we're going to be providing this with lava here in a minute. It's going to be infinite. Okay, so we'll have a belt that is going to be running from here to here. So I need to add a conveyor that goes here. And because this gearbox is rotating the direction, this fits in perfectly now. And so what we'll have is an infinite loop, hopefully, that is going to be running. And we still have access back here. Um, but directly above this, we're going to have a spout. And this is how we're going to fill our bucket. So we're going to use one bucket of lava. That one bucket of lava should um all work here i think um the only problem is i don't know exactly where the uh the, the bucket goes like when it drops um but it hopefully it drops on the conveyor belt we'll see i've actually not tried this let's actually let's uh let's tell this real quick uh what to actually do and that way i'll have an understanding of the lava bucket situation because i don't want to get fully into this and then me realize hey the lava bucket doesn't go anywhere um, because that would be kind of frustrating. So let's just assume this, this right here is where it's going to pick up from. And it's going to pick up a lava bucket, hopefully. All right. So a bucket of lava. Nice. That grabbed. Perfect. All right. So it should pick this up and utilize it. Let's see. As soon as it goes right here. It'll know it's there. Pick it up. Feed it to one of these guys. And then what does it do with the bucket? I hope it's smart about it and puts the bucket back on the plate. It does not. It just holds it. So then what? How do you tell it to put the bucket back? Or do we need to have a setup here that takes the bucket out of its hands? 
and puts it over here. That might be what I'm gonna have to do. I almost wonder if the solution to this is putting a brass funnel here. Um, doesn't seem like it cares. It's not pulling the, uh, the bucket out. And let's try another, let's try again. Another bucket of lava. It's going to pick it up. It doesn't care. This is set to pull out, fill that up, and then it leaves it. Huh. I wonder if there's a mode. So after doing a little bit of testing, I did figure out how this is going to work. Uh, so I select all of them, just like this. And I have to set an input and output as well. So we'll set that as an input. And then over here, I'm going to set this as an output. Um, actually, if I set this as an output, it will probably try to pick up the bucket, won't it? Um, that is a very good question. So it's going to go over here. I kind of wanted to pick up from over here and then place over here. Yeah, that's probably a better option. You know what? I don't let's let's go ahead and wipe the locations. Um, and so, yeah, let's go ahead and select all of these. Just like so. Perfect. And then I want the pickup location to be after the fact, which is going to be over here. And then the deposit location to be over here. Ah, OK, so logic all works. So we place this in and uh, now we should get this to work. And so what will happen now if I make a bucket of lava, which I think a bucket went over here somewhere. If I make a bucket of lava now and I place it right here, it's going to pick it up. It is going to use it and then it's going to place the bucket back on the conveyor belts. Oh, that is fantastic. And then it's going to land on the spout to be refilled with lava. Thus, we will have ourselves a infinite refilling system. Oh, this is good. So here's our other problem, right? We need to get lava. So I have my infinite ender tank here and all we need to do is get into create pipes and uh, we need to make ourselves a mechanical pump. So we need to make some pipes and a pump. And now just to make this look a little bit fancy, I'm going to extend the pump, uh, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that at all. Um, I'm going to place this here. And actually, this needs to be turned on its side uh, because I don't want it to pull from there. I want it to be placed here and then placed on the bottom. Perfect. Actually, it probably needs to go up. Yeah, it needs to go up one more as well. Man, all these things we've got to gotta get done. Okay, up here, I'm going to place it like that. And then, of course, we can add some decorations later on to this. Um, but we need this is going to be where it's actually pumping or how it's pumping. And I don't want it connecting here. I think I can use the wrench to determine that. Can I use the wrench to tell it that? Can I use casing to tell it that? Actually, I don't know how I would tell it, hey, don't connect to our water tank. So you know what? Instead, we're going to place this right on top. So let's, <laughs> let's add a couple of pipes, like I said, just to make it look pretty. And we're making sure we keep it separate from this because I don't want it to interfere. Um, and then we have this rod, which is going to pump lava into here. So we just need a cog. Uh, just a regular small cog and a couple of shafts. And we'll extend the shaft up here and make sure that's going this way. And I think we can hit this to convert it if it's going the wrong way. And now this should, if all is working should be pumping lava yes it is working because i see the lava drips and there we go we can see the lava now working its way down and working its way into this perfect and once we get enough in here it should fill this and thus this whole thing will be automated that is pretty crazy actually like and then we can decorate this thing uh also uh, to figure out how much stress this is generating um let's put our goggles back on um, let's see, is this filled up? This only has 256. Once this thing gets up and going, I think this will go faster. This might be its fastest it can go, I don't know. Because uh, we might have to do some gear ratioing to get this to spin a bit faster. Now, a way, an easy way to do that would be to use a large cog here, and then put a small cog right there on the side. And then that would work. Seems like it's functioning. 
Once it hits max, it should fill that bucket up. And thus the whole thing is going to get repeated. Oh, this is... This is exciting. I, I like this stuff. Alright, let's get... Let's speed this up a little bit. Let's do a large cog. I know it may look a little bit weird, wonky doing that, but a large cog. And then a small cog off to the side. We'll technically power this. Make sure that gets flipped. That is going a bit faster now. You can see the lava draining down. And... There we go. So it's starting to fill this up. And it looks like it's going a little over 20 millibuckets a tick. There we go. Filled with lava. It picks it up. It puts it into one of the machines. Places it back down. And then we wait for this to fill back up. Oh, I might want to set up a speed controller for this. So I went ahead and topped these off with coal. It does seem like it is going a bit faster uh, now that we have this fully routed. And of course, if there's nothing for it to pick up, it's going to go ahead and take it and then redeposit it back onto the other side for it to go around again and again and again and again. And to be honest, we actually don't need these belts that are over here. Um, simply because it, it literally just goes right here. And so we could just leave this, uh, just like this. So we can put this in. Actually, no, there's already, uh, there's already one in here. So in reality, let's go ahead and remove this and that. I know the belt just fell off, but if we redo our belts... We can have a much more streamlined setup here. Oh yeah, this is this is much better. Uh, let's get rid of this belt. And then place this in here. And it is a lot simpler now. Wow, look at that. Um, and then... Just for some looks, we can throw in a flywheel. Just for some looks right on here on the front. That's going to get to spinning. And uh, there we go. So let's take a look at the stress units, by the way, that we are using here. So producing. We're producing about, with this setup, uh, we're producing nine or 97,000 stress units. Um, of course, we are using very little of it. But just with this, we're producing a ton of stress that we can then feed to all of our other machines. This thing is a beast. And we've just, getting, we've, we've just now uh, got started with it. Uh, this is pretty nice. So after a tiny little bit of decorating, of course, there is a lot more decorating to, to definitely come. This is looking pretty darn good. Uh, we can actually go ahead and get rid of that. And uh, yeah, this thing is self-sufficient. I think I'm going to end up kind of covering this up. I did go ahead and gear ratio us several more times. Um, so it's it's just gear ratioed up like three more times, um, which is going fast enough definitely to keep up. As you can see, I've not had any of these stop working, but this is fantastic. I just added some decoration, just added some pipes to the side just for some decoration. Um, added this to the top so these didn't look so weird. Added some uh, campfires so it looks like steam is rising up. And I think this is going to look great inside of our factory. This is going to be a big part of our factory area that I'm, I'm planning on building. Um, of course, the grounds are not going to look like this, but oh, this steam engine setup is fantastic and uh guys i hope you enjoyed today's episode of course click that subscribe button if you learn something new about create or you just learn something in general please let me know because i'd love to learn so let me know down in the comments what you did learn if you did learn something new um of course like i said click that subscribe button give this video a thumbs up uh be sure to check out the discord discord.gg forward slash chosen architect that is the place to go for modded minecraft all kinds of minecraft in general stuff um, if you want to have discussions about it, or if you want to uh, potentially find a friend to play with, it is a great place to do that. Over 26,000 members over there. Um, and if you're a supporter through that, you do get access to sub servers and uh, all kinds of cool perks that are included there on the Discord, including world downloads. Um, so if you would, think about supporting. Uh, speaking of supporters, by the way, I would like to thank the supporter of today's video, which is also another perk of supporting over on Discord. And of course, that, my friends, is going to be a huge thanks. Going to Quiet Borb. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord. Becoming a Discord premium member and supporting me in one of the best ways possible. 
Guys, I hope you enjoyed. Of course, I'll see you guys in the next one. Be sure to click that subscribe button yet again. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.